let's get started. I want everybody to take their Bibles and turn to Galatians. Uh, but I want to say hello, family. How y'all doing? And uh, for those of you who are watching by YouTube and Facebook, uh, we want to welcome to Friendship Mission Church, a church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama at 3561 Mobile Highway, Montgomery, Alabama, 36108. And if you want to call to give a donation, you can call at area code 334-281-2395. And uh, we just want to welcome to our Bible study. We've been on a series over the last few weeks dealing with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? We have already covered um, how to be a fruit bearer. We've already covered love, joy, and peace. We already covered long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness last week. So this week, we are going to cover... Uh, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen? The, as I was telling you, those are, it's one fruit, singular, but it has nine elements to it. Uh, three are for you, three are for others, and three are for God. Okay? But let's go to Galatians, because that's what we started off at. First, we have to understand the liberty in Christ so that you could be a fruit bearer. And I use this particular verse uh, to show you that you have liberty in Jesus. Amen? So, starting at Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and then we'll pray it in. Uh, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's going to come forth. I thank you for the series, Lord God. I thank you for those who are understanding and receiving what the fruit of the Spirit really means in their lives, that they will be transformed not only on the outside, but from the inside out. So I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, let the house say amen. amen. All right, let's go to verse 22 and 23 of Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Amen? Now, as I was saying, let's do a quick review. We had talked about fruit bearing. What does, what does it mean to be a fruit bearer? You must first be able to abide in Christ. The secret to fruit bearing is abiding in Christ. And what is the secret to abiding in Christ? You must be obey Christ. And what is the secret in obeying Christ? You must love Christ. And what is the secret in loving him? You must know him. Then we talked about the love of God. And I explained all the love that were in the Bible, agapeo, which is unconditional, storge, which is family love, phileo, which is friendship love, and we also talked about eros, which is perverted love, okay? And then we looked at joy, that God does get joy over you, and we looked at peace, and I showed you in the scripture where Jesus um, rebuked the what? The wind, something that he can't see and told the circumstance that he had going on to be at what? Peace, and it ceased, but you have to learn how to rebuke what you can't see in order to tell what you can see to be at peace. Amen. And that was out of Mark chapter 4. Then we looked at long suffering and how God long suffers with us. And we talked about the husbandmen and how that was actually uh, a parable that Jesus was talking to those religious folk who had a bunch of titles but didn't want to love him or know him for who he truly was. Here you had the Messiah that we been looking for standing in front of him, but they couldn't even recognize him for who he is. But he used that long suffering parable to say, you know, they rented it out to the husbandmen, right? That was the Jews, or the vineyard was the Jews. And he kept sending servants after servants. And those servants represented, thank you, uh, Danette, even though I forgot to mention that last week, but she reminded me those servants were uh, the Old Testament prophets that God kept sending to those to the Jews to say, stop, 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 or come, come, come. And they would either stone them or kill them. Because if you were a prophet in the Old Testament and your prophecy didn't come forth, they killed you. You know, so you can't stand up and say you are a prophet and they don't come to pass, boy, they would keep you, right? Then we saw that after he kept sending those servants, then, then he finally sent his son. And that was a representation of Jesus Christ. And what did they do? They killed him. Amen. Amen. But God still long suffered with them. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about, we even talked about the gentleness of God. Because we know God's gentleness makes you what? Great. The scripture told us that God's gentleness makes you great. He comes down low. He even stoops low to look at the angels and everything under heaven. Amen? And God is what? Good. You know, even we looked in Genesis that saw that everything he said or created or spoke into existence, he, what was his final word to it? And it was what? Good. Amen. Amen. So let's go to faith. What is the faith? 
faith of God. Faith is trusting commitment of one person to another, particularly of a person to God, particularly of a person to God. Faith is the central concept of Christianity. One may be called a Christian only if one has what? Faith. In the New Testament, faith is used in a number of ways, but primarily with the meaning trust or confidence in God. So whenever you say you have faith, you are saying I have trust and confidence in God. Matter of fact, I forgot to say something. Y'all say hello to my wife. Amen. She's the reason why this whole series came to be. Amen. She is the reason. What happened? It stop? Oh, well. Amen. Amen. So get it going if you can. That's all. We just knew that was going to happen sooner or later. All right. So let's go to Mark 11, 22. Mark 11 and 22. And said unto them, have what? Faith in God. In other words, trust or be confident in God. Amen? Trust or be confident in God. Jesus told his hearers to place their confidence in God. It is a common saying in the synoptics of Jesus to say, after healing someone, thy faith has made thee whole. But in other words, we still have to have trust and confidence. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, and look at verses 11 to 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your what? Heart. Amen. Trust in him. Trust and confidence in him. Amen. So, but Jesus would always look at someone and say, thy faith has made thee whole. What he said? Thy trust and confidence in me has healed you, has made you whole. Amen. Amen. So let's get some examples of that. Let's go to um, Matthew 9. Matthew chapter 9. I'm not worried about no video. I'm worried about y'all receiving this word. Amen. Matthew chapter 9. Look at verse 22. But Jesus turned him about, and when he had saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee what? Whole. And the woman was made whole from that out. Now we talking about that woman who had the issue of blood. But he told her, thy what? Trust and confidence has made you whole. Amen. Thy trust and confidence. Look at Mark chapter 5. Book in front of that. Mark 5. It's just a synoptic. Remember I told you what synoptic means when we talked about the Gospels? Synoptic means three different points of view. The same story with three different points of view. That's why Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptic. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are called the Gospels. Amen? You got that? But Mark chapter 5 with that same type of story. And let's see what he says to her. Mark 5, verse 34. Mark 5, verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy what? Trust and confidence, or faith, has made thee whole. Go in what? Peace, and be whole in thy what? Plague. There you go. But her trust, because that woman had had that issue for uh, a number of years. But she trusted so much till she just reached down and touched the hem of his garment. Just reached down and touched the hem of his garment. You know? just And I'm telling you, what a fantastic thing. Amen. Now, let's look at a... a Another story here that really blessed me. Let's go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Starting at verse 36. Luke 7 verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired to him that he would eat with him. And he went 
into the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have none would have known who would what man or woman this is that touched him. For she is a what? Sinner. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto you. And he said, Master, say on. He looked at him and said, You know what, dude? I got something to say to you. You know, so he's like, go ahead. You know, holler at me, right? But why? He don't know Jesus is getting ready to get in his tail. You know, how many people have talked about you? Hello. Amen. Damn, okay. Let's finish reading the story. Verse 41. So he began to tell him this story. Ready? Verse 41. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom, what? For what's forgiven the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Verse 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seeth thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. See? I've told y'all before that back in those days everybody wore sandals and they used to have slaves at the door that would wash your feet before you entered so you don't bring the dust from the road into somebody's home. But he didn't He didn't do that for Jesus. All right? He said, you ain't never washed my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. See, with men, we got a little bit homophobic here in America, but Jews would greet each other with a holy kiss. Even the Bible tells us as Christians we should greet each other with a holy kiss. Amen. You know, back in my old church, we brothers didn't mind grabbing each other and kissing each other on the cheek. You know, I wasn't going to kiss them on the lip, but we kiss each other on the cheek. Amen. That's about as far as holy I was getting. All right. Amen. <laughs> that gave us me no kiss. <laughs> woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto you her sins, which are many, amen, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is given, the same love loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they sat at me with, with him, began to say within themselves, see, look at this, they began to speak to themselves. Who is this that forgives sins also? Who do you think he is? Who did Jesus think he is? Verse 50. And he said to the woman, Thy what? Faith. Thy trust and confidence has what? Not only made you whole this time, this time it saved you. Come on, y'all. Saved you. Go in peace. Go in peace. Now, see, that's a perfect example that these people, and I've experienced something like this this week, uh, dealing with the videos that I'm doing down here a little bit, but that's an absurd example that there's a bunch of people with titles. Pharisees, the religious sect, bishop so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, and minister so-and-so, instead of just being brother and sister. Amen. So they saw Jesus was getting a little popularity. Oh, come on, we want to sit with you now. They weren't paying no attention when he just had his 12. Now all of a sudden his name is spreading because now he got a name. So we want to be seen next to the name. Amen. You know, we can't receive nothing from nobody else, but we'll receive something now that you got a name. They still didn't even see him as the Messiah, but you got a name. Amen. I can't hardly stand folk with titles half the day, to be honest, because their title had made them lost where they came from. But I was dealing with that, and I posted one of the videos up there, and this woman came back and said, I thank you, all the way on the other side of the world. Hardly could speak English. 
But she saw and said, you know what? Thank you for your word. I'm getting born again. My mother's sick and dying in the hospital. Could y'all pray? Now, I got these people with titles that are on my friends list. Amen. Amen. They started saying, instead of seeing the cry of that person, just like Mary, who walked in there, she wasn't paying no attention to nobody in that room with title. All she saw was who can heal her, who can deliver her, who can make her whole. She didn't care about them folk. Amen. And if they were really the religious and cared with the title, because she's supposed to be humble, they would have saw her sickness too and began to pray. Amen. So here this woman said, my mama's dying. Everybody on the list started talking about, could you please take me off your list? Could you please remove me? I said, don't y'all see somebody's asking for prayer? Doctor so-and-so? Because I don't see doctor in the Bible other than Jesus and Luke. Amen. And if you were a doctor, you would have recognized that this person needed healing. Amen. 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 Then you got minister so-and-so. Well, minister so-and-so, remove me from a little. Well, can't you see minister? There's a person asking for help. There was a brother from Islam who was on there too, and he said, man, thank you for the word. Can you see there was an opportunity for you to minister? Amen. There was a prophet on there too. Couldn't you see you had an opportunity to give them a word of knowledge? But instead you said, get me off the list. So what did that represent to that person who's a baby in Christ? That tells them, I don't want to be a Christian like you. Hello. Amen. Maybe that's why the video breaking. Because I was sure enough going to put it on there. But guess what? I got an audio I'm going to put out there. Got a backup. And you don't take the low state. Amen. You are hurting babies. Don't worry about me. But you know, I wrote them and said, you know what? If this had been a message about how to get rich in three days, you wouldn't have been asking to get off the list. If I was Bishop so-and-so, who are getting all these notifications that you send me a million times a day, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have said, take me off the list. If it had been about money, but this was the person who wanted some help and needed prayer, and it's about souls. So you know what I told them? Said, remove me. I said, remove yourself. All right. I ain't removing you. You remove yourself. If you know computers, all you got to do is click on it. Because the best response was no response. If they even respond with something negative, you showed that your heart wasn't right. Amen. So you know what I said? Remove yourself. And then I gave them a real word because I know they know their Bible. So you know what I said? Remove yourself and also depart from me. I never knew you. <laughs> souls. I ain't about my pocket. Amen. Amen. You didn't help me when I was going through. Then all my other friends who are like us who've been through something were coming back like a bomb. Don't remove me, brother. Hey, brother, keep me on your list, brother. Oh, they didn't do nothing for me anyway. See? You gotta keep it real. How you gonna get a title and forget where you came from? See, that's why cause they were trying to catch up with the title instead of letting the title catch up with them. See, my title caught up with me. Because with or without it, I'm going to still stand here and preach the word of God. If I got one person on the corner, I'm going to do it. I don't need your mega church. I don't need your mega money. I don't need your mega you. Depart from me, I never knew you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, I got that off my chest. <laughs> of love in washing Jesus' feet and drying them with her hair, it was not this woman's love that saved her. What was it? It was her faith. True faith will always manifest itself in love. Go to um, Galatians chapter 5 again. Go back to Galatians 5. I hope y'all got something out of that. Because I've been teaching on the fruit of the Spirit for the last, this is the fourth week, and it's the last one. I'm too bad that they work on it, but it's the last one that I had to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit through this whole testing. And fruit of the Spirit don't mean you have to just keep on taking it, because I forbear that thing for a minute, you know, but I'm a warrior, and I can't stand seeing babies get offended. Amen. Because to be honest, and I'm going to say this too, to be honest, if I had to look at those folk with titles, and those folk who don't want to have nothing to do with people who need help, I wouldn't be a Christian. Amen. The only reason why I'm a Christian today is because I met Jesus personally. Amen. See, if I had to go by the Jesus I know from people with titles, pastor, bishop, whatever they are, I'd have been a Muslim. Amen. Just that simple. But I met him personally. So all I'm saying to you is don't be 
become a Christian based on the pastor, the deacon, the minister, brother or sister, so and so. You become a Christian because you have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. He is real. Amen. He is real, people. If you're focusing on a man or woman in the church, you ain't saved. You better focus on Jesus and him alone. Amen. That's what it's about, relationship. Forget that. Because you come at me, I don't care what your title is, and you're wrong, I'm going to correct you. I'm going to correct you. Matter of fact, okay, Lord, I hear you. Go to Galatians. I said five. Go to Galatians two. Well, you ain't supposed to come up in no leader face. Well, I'm going to show you someone who did. And if Paul can do it, I can do it. Hello. You ready? Galatians two. Titus Greek and that because of false brethren. Let's go up to, let's start at verse 16. What did you say? 16? Thank you. Because you know it wasn't written on my paper. <laughs> now I want to give the whole story. There you go. Let's go up to 12. Let's go to 12. Uh, no, let's go up to 10. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was coming to Antioch, I withstood him. That word withstood means I got in his face. I got in his grill. Now, this is Paul talking. I got in his grill. Why? I withstood him to the what? Face. Because he was to be what? Blamed. For before the certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Now, what that means is Peter's a Jew. He wasn't supposed to be eating no pig. Hello. So here it is. He got with Paul and the boys who were not Jews and said, pass me the bacon, pass me the pork chop, and pass me the chicken. <laughs> and was greasy. You know what I mean? But here it is. He was even the first one who got the revelation on food that God said all things he created was good, blessed, and needed. Amen. But this is what happened. So he said, look at that again. Verse 12, he said, for before the servant came from James, James was the pastor of Jerusalem, that was Jesus' brother, okay? He did eat with the Gentiles, pass me the chillies and the, and the bacon. But when they come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which are the circumcision. Them are the circumcision mean Jews. So, when the boys came down from Jerusalem, he said, no. He separated. He said, no, I don't eat no pig. Uh-huh. Hypocrite. Right? I ain't eating the pig. I didn't do that. But see, the problem is when you're a leader and people are looking at you, they're going to follow you. Amen. So all the babies are looking at him. Man, you was just eating chillings with me last night. Now they said they don't want to eat it. Now you act like you wouldn't eat with me all week. Uh, Every time I put the bacon on the plate, you ate it. Amen. Now here they come. Nope. Uh, you hypocrite. Hello. Hello. So look what Paul says. Paul says this, verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled. Now the word dissemble means they became hypocrites. They separated themselves from the Gentiles. In other words, they moved away from the poor. They moved away from the addict. They moved away from the homeless. No, no, no. You know, the high Christians came down. I need to get with them now because I sat with you all week, but here come Bishop T.D. Jakes. Let me go sit with him. Give me a break. Oh, Lord, he's moving on me, right? <laughs> Verse 13, and other Jews dissembled likewise with them. And so much that Barnabas also was carried away with this dissimulation. That Barnabas was Paul's boy. Even he started following Peter's example. You got to watch the example you're giving with people. But when I saw, I love this, here go Paul. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according unto the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. He wasn't ashamed. He got right in his face in front of the whole congregation. In front of them all, if thou being a Jew liveth after the manner of Gentiles, if you being a Jew and eating pig, hello, if you being a Jew and eating food that has not been, what do they call that when they are kosher, amen, and not as of the Jews, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? Oh, brother, you ain't on me faith. Come on, bro. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, not by the works of the law, for by 
by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Amen. Amen. Now, that was my example that if a leader doing wrong, you can get in his grill. Amen. Don't let that leader tell you. You can't, you can't talk back to me. You need a witness. I don't need no witness. You better get a witness because he might stop me from knocking you out. About the only witness you're going to need. Amen. Because you get wrong with me, I'm going to get wrong with you. Amen. I ain't there yet.